Hello Blogineers, we are in Ponce, Puerto Rico, and we're going to show you the fun things you can do here. Our first stop is the Tibes Indigenous Ceremonial Center. These were the early colonial foods that the indigenous people ate. Here's Kamu, I mean here's cow, which is the same size as Kamu. They ate manatees too, which is kind of sad. They used to use this as a spoon. As you can see, they have this little thing as a handle. You'll be able to come in here, scoop it out, and then you use it. You can even put cow here and eat him. This is their version of mummifying someone. They were put in a fetal position and then buried with food. It doesn't look as good as mummies, but it's still an interesting way of burying someone. This is the area where they found the artifacts that we just saw in the museum. The trees here all have fruits that the natives used to eat. This place was discovered in 1975, and the whole place was buried before that due to floods. Here there's some ruins with rocks, so this could be an area where they gathered. And here's our first real petroglyph. I'm picking up this fruit shell with a stick. It's like launching a cannonball. And that is the t -Base Indigenous Ceremonial Center. My favorite part was, of course, throwing the, the little fruit. I found the inside museum to be interesting, learning about how the natives lived, like how they ate dogs and crushed their skulls. It seems like a very different way of life. It was also cool checking out the outside because that's where they lived and gathered around. And we even saw a petroglyph. We are at Plaza Las Delicias. Behind us is the Lion Fountain, which was constructed for the 1939 World Fair. This is the city hall, and the clock in the clock tower was imported from London in 1877. Our next stop is Parque de Balbas. This is a historical fire station. Here are some artifacts of old firefighter helmets. It says that the orange ones were used in the 1800s, and then they shifted to the black ones for the 1900s. But when I think of firefighters, I think of them wearing red. A view of the town square. We're walking through town and we stumbled upon this free art gallery, the Ponce Cultural Center. This painting shows that Puerto Ricans come from three races, African, Spanish, and Taino, which is the native race. We just took a picture with the artist and he told us that these pieces over here are his favorites. We're now in the art classroom. There's the teacher in the back and around him are artwork done by his students. And that is the Ponce Cultural Center. My favorite part was the drugs. I like seeing the artwork in there, and we met the artists too. Some of the artwork was abstract, and others was more traditional oil painting. It's time to get some ice cream. Our next stop is the History of Ponce Museum. And that's the History of Ponce Museum. 
I didn't understand anything because it was all in Spanish, but the inside was nice. So I, I guess only come here if you know how to read the language. Our next stop is the Fox Hotel, and apparently they have an interesting lobby. At the artwork here, I recognize Marilyn Monroe, but not the others. Oh, is that Presley? That's Presley. Frida. Wait, I thought Frida has a unibrow. And then I don't know who the smoker is. We're gonna go on a tour at Museo Castillo Serrano. This is a 1930s Spanish Revival style home built by the family of the famous Don Q. Rudd. We're gonna start the tour by watching a film. This house was built in the 1930s during the Great Depression and it was sold for $85,000. And the first owners of this house used this as a vacation home. 90% of the furniture that was in this house is still here. This looks like it's the family room. It's very well lit and this is the only wooden floor in the entire house. The wood's from Brazil. And the mirror and the clock, anything that's wrong is imported from France. This the interior patio. Up there used to, there used to not be that roof, so it would just be open. And there used to be a water fountain here that could hold up to 8,000 gallons. And then they opened the door, so when the wind comes, it would create mist and then uh, basically make an air condition for the whole entire house. This is the formal dining room. It was only used for special occasions, which means they had another dining room that they used casually. And this would be the most expensive room in the whole house. Look at these plates, they have 18 karat gold. Everything here is so fancy. So many things on this table were imported from France, Spain, other countries. This is also the only wooden ceiling in the house. Here's the kitchen. They put foods that they would have eaten, like the coconut, bread, and then over here are many fruits and veggies. This is the music room, and it has the highest roof of all the buildings in this place. It's 35 feet. We're going to see a closer look when we go upstairs. There were seven to eight bedrooms in this house, and this is the only one that's available on the tour. The bed and this dresser over here were imported from France. So many things in this home were imported from another country. This girl over here was the last owner of the home. And that is Museo Castillo Serralis. My favorite part was the fancy dining room because that's the, that's the fanciest room I've been in in this entire trip. It was so cool. I also like the inside terrace part. It would be even better if they kept the doors open like what the homeowners experienced back in the day so all the wind could flow in with the fountain and then there's mist. That's just so cool to imagine. My favorite part is also the interior porch. I wish they kept everything as the werewolf. That would be so refreshing. Oh, and I like the affiliation they have with Don Q, which is one of Puerto Rico's biggest rum companies because the founders of Don Q lived in this house. Now we're visiting La Cruz de Vigia. The elevator's not working, so we're just gonna hike up to the cross. We made it to the top of the cross. Here we can see the city of Ponce and the Atlantic Ocean over there, which is also the Caribbean Sea. The climb up wasn't bad and the view is pretty good. I think this is the highest lookout we've had in our entire Puerto Rico trip. And also, when you go all the way over here, you can see the cat. The Japanese garden is over there, which is included in the price of your ticket to come to this cross. We're now at La Guancha and we're gonna walk around the boardwalk.
These are pelicans, and back in the US, I think they fly away when you come by, but here they come up to you because people feed them. There's a lot of fish here, but they're too big for the pelicans. It looks like the boardwalk's closed, but we still had a great time here because of the pelicans. There was a guy selling sardines to feed to the pelicans for $1 a bag, and some of the locals bought it. The pelicans are so cute. They're like our version of ducks at home, but better. My favorite part was when the pelicans would go and waddle right on the uh, path. That's it. See you in the next video. Bye.